Glory to God. Good morning. <laughs> How's everybody today? Are you blessed and highly favored? Oh, glory. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a good day to die. <laughs> Oh, would you turn your word, your sword, sharpen it up to 1 Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3. He is risen. Oh, yes. Is everybody there? First Timothy chapter three and verse fourteen. <clears throat> We'll speak it together, please. These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. And without controversy, God, great, is the mystery of Godliness. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed in the world, and received up in glory. Great is the mystery of godliness. In other words, there's something that the Holy Spirit is trying to release in the arena where we talk about existence. Great is the mystery of existence. And, and in this, great is the mystery of existence. God, the creator of existence, in multiple realms, he created this existence of reality where it was manifested not only in a temporary dimension and influenced by a false reality that we've seen multiple times. So God's, the king of glory, God almighty, Created everything. Amen? And in this, there is an existence. There's a mystery of existence. You know, scientists are still trying to figure out what is existence, where we came from, how it happened, when, where, what. They're trying to figure out all of this stuff. And they will never find the true answers because it's all in Christ. That's where all the answers are. It's nowhere else. They will search, they will dig, they will go through the depths of the ocean floor, they will dig deep into the earth, they will travel to planets and multiple places, and they will never understand the God of existence who created existence. They won't understand it. They don't even understand why. And when you and I came into this world, we were the same way. Who am I, why am I here, and where am I going? We didn't understand why we were existing. What the heck's my purpose? Amen. That was a mystery, and it's still a mystery. It's a mystery to many. And even Jesus told the disciples that the mysteries were to be revealed were granted to me and you. But the other ones, they still don't get it. That's why he said, I'll speak to them in parables. <laughs> the mystery, great is the mystery of existence. God, the creator of existence, he created it. And multiple realms of reality. Now, in these realms, they were manifested. In other words, we see a manifestation of existence in the temporary realm, but there's a manifestation of existence in the eternal realm. Amen? Amen. And what's happened now in this temporary realm, it's been influenced <clears throat> by darkness and creating a false reality. One of the things God was redoing when he sent Jesus into the world was to reshape reality. He came into the world to reshape humanity 
in every area. Why? To restore us back to the arena of originality and the image of himself. God is love. God is love. See, the world won't understand. They'll be looking at every area to why we exist and what's the purpose. Some philosophy or uh, theories and all of these things of what is the existence for. But God created me and you in the existence of love. Love. The world can't figure this out. <laughs> and they're not going to figure it out. Because everything is revealed in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So, <clears throat> Jesus came to remove the false reality. That's why he ripped the veil of deception. He paid the price for all mankind. What did mankind do? They betrayed him. They betrayed him. And he paid the price for their betrayal. Then he reconnected us back to himself and he released the fragrance of truth. <laughs> and then he, then he rose again from the dead and returned to his throne as a creator of existence. You know, it still amazes me all the time in the area to where we came from nothing. But we actually didn't come from nothing. We came from him. But only God can create something out of nothing. He doesn't need anything to create something. He spoke and it was done. That's it. But our carnal peanut brain is a hard time comprehending the existence that we live and why we exist. And many people fear leaving the temporary realm because they're not connected to the eternal. Because when you're connected to the eternal, there is no fear of leaving. There's no fear of death. In fact, there should be a joy of departure. Knowing that you're finally going home. <laughs> but the world won't get that. That's why they've caught up in survival mode and not surrender. We are now surrendered through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We don't fight to live. We actually fight to die. <laughs> Die to what? Ourselves. That is a battle every day. In Revelation 12. The mystery of existence. Oh, hallelujah. Revelation 12 is a short summary of existence. <laughs> it explains it all. Is everybody there? In verse 1, Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. Now we know that the mystery of God Almighty, of Christ, was written in the 12 constellations. It's in the heavenlies. If you look at each constellation, it is the story of Jesus Christ. From the virgin birth to becoming the king. <laughs> in, ver in verse 2, Then being with child, she cried out in labor and pain to give birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. And his tail drew a third of the stars or the angels of heaven and threw them to the earth. And a dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up to God in his throne. There is the story of the death of Christ, the birth, the death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Christ. 
Then a woman fled into the wilderness, and there she has a place prepared by God that they should feed her there 1,260 days, which is coming. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great serpent was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who does what? Deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony that they did not love their lives to death. Very powerful. Again, this is a short summary of everything. The, all the, the answer is right here in the book of Revelation. It also sets forth the stages of things to come. Remember the Bible, the word of God is three-dimensional, past, present, and future. There are areas in this that we haven't reached yet, but there are areas that we have reached. And in this, we look at this because it is so powerful, because this is a mystery in here that must be interpreted, and it can only be interpreted by the Holy Spirit. And that's where many people fall short because they try to interpret things with the carnal mind, with man's wisdom, with intellect that they've learned from schools. It won't work. These are things that are not taught in school. You can't even go into cemetery school and learn some of these things or seminary school, I'm sorry. These things are taught and released by the Holy Spirit. And that can only be, a, can be established if you're connected to God's presence and aligned with the Word of God. Amen? So this mystery, the mystery of Christ, this is about he explains, man, Christ has come. Christ has come. Christ is coming again. But the thing was Christ was left for me and you by his Spirit. So we see again, Christ is a representation of anointing, which is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. The Christ has come. Well, he's been here, paid the price for each and every one of us, and he, destroyed, he overcame death, hell, and the grave. Amen? In 1 John chapter 1, <clears throat> 1 John chapter 1, the gift of God is life. Life. That's why he's known as the way, the truth, and the life. First John chapter 1. Mystery of existence. Is everybody there? First chapter, uh, John, uh, first John chapter 1, verse 1. Let's speak it together. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. And who is the word of life? Christ Jesus. Amen. The life, that the life was manifested and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested to us that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. And if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. 
The word of life is Jesus the Christ. He is the eternal power, presence, and truth of God Almighty. <clears throat> so one of the things he came again, I want to reemphasize, is to connect us back to him. And to disconnect us from the world. So he wanted to connect us to him, to the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, and to disconnect us from the world's influence. Why? So we could be restored to his love, peace, and joy, and be refreshed and renewed of our existence in reality. In Romans chapter 6, I'll say that again. So that we can be reconnected to him and disconnected from the worldly influence. To be restored to his love, his joy, and peace, and be refreshed from his presence, and be renewed in our existence in reality. Because things, the word renewed also is a representation of bring to remembrance. Bring to remembrance. In Romans chapter 6. Romans 6 and verse 1. Everybody there? Everybody okay? In verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? Sin is a representation of the presence of evil. That grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we are buried with him through the baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. That is a representation of newness of existence. See, your existence and my existence, you cannot, when you look in the mirror, that existence is temporary. But we are spirits. And many times we lose sight of that. Amen? We lose sight of it. Man, we try to dress up the outside, keep it clean, refreshed. But the outside is going back. It's going back to the dirt where it came from. <laughs> it's the inside that we need to keep clean and pure. Why? Because what does the Lord say? Who may abide in my tabernacle? Who may stand in my presence? He has a pure heart and clean hands. So in this we see there's that newness of life. So that newness of life is to bring remembrance to me and you all the time of our existence. But our true existence. Not the temporary existence, but the eternal existence. And we have to battle with that all the time. We have to fight that on a constant level of who we really are. Because any moment, any glimpse of slipping from that, we begin, the first thing that begins to happen is we begin to lose who we are. We begin to lose our true reality and purpose. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 5, For if we have been unified together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from the presence of evil. Does everybody get it? Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we all shall so live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him nor us. Does everybody get that? We volunteer our death. We offer it as a living sacrifice. It is constant. <coughs> it's not a temporary thing. It's not a one-time moment. It is every day. That's where he says, every day, present your spirit, soul, and bodies as a living sacrifice. That's a representation of your offering your death every day, every single day. 
The world cannot comprehend our existence. They can't get it. And I'm talking about all existence. They're still searching for it. Because the mystery is in the Christ. The created, the one who created our existence. And because of his love, which is the existence of God. I want to share that again, because sometimes we lose sight of that. The creator, the God that created our existence, he created it because of love. The existence of God is love. Sometimes we don't look at the, that arena. It says, the word says God is love. So God's existence is love. And that's why he created me and you out of love so that he can expand his own existence in mankind, but by love. Is everybody okay? That'll take a minute to digest. <laughs> That's why his light is pure. Those in darkness try to calculate reason, theorize, <laughs> but they can't come to the understanding of the truth until they come to Christ. Amen? Amen. And in Ephesians chapter 3. <clears throat> I think people get uh, misled because of lack of interpretation of the word. They think, so many people think that Adam was created to take care of God's garden. You know. <laughs> And so, because Adam was alone, so he created Eve, you know. <laughs> so the two of them can take care of the garden. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Ephesians 3 and verse 7, uh, verse 1, I'm sorry. Ephesians 3, verse 1. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for your Gentiles, if indeed you had heard the of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which is a, the mystery of existence, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it has been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the, of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel or the message of truth, of which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. To me who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given to me that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. And where was it hidden? In him already. So the only way to understand the mystery of existence is to enter into Christ. The only way. And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, and whom we have boldness and access with confidence through him, in faith. Eternal purpose of the Godhead, the counsel of God, was to release the fragrance of God's love and presence into a new created place we call the universe so that existence could maintain in this place for the beginning to an end. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. So there's a time of this existence, of this place of existence, this temporary place, to where it's going to get folded up, burned up, and thrown away. But because you and I were created in his image and likeness by the new birth of being born again, we'll exit this place. 
and to the eternal existence of God himself. That's a hard thing to grab hold of sometimes because we are so distracted by so many things that are temporary. We are so caught up in so many things. And the worst thing we are caught up in our, is ourselves because the existence, we're so caught up in our own existence that we lose sight that we're supposed to be living from the future to the present, not from the past to the present. We so get caught up of living for ourselves. That's why Jesus gave the formula, deny yourself. Why? So when we deny ourselves, we can fall into the place of, in the death of Christ where we rose with him, but we died with him. So that our existence can be maintained an eternal existence and not temporary. Oh, hallelujah. That's why he says, every, anyone that's in Christ is a what? New creation. That's a new existence. In Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. In verse 9. You know, it's amazing the deception of the enemy because... One of the things the enemy loves to do is to contaminate anything God does. And if you get a chance, go to the Eternal Library and you can watch the video on there about Easter and its origination, where it came from. It's not about eggs and bunny rabbits and chocolate. Amen? It's actually promoted as the, one of the most perverse days besides Halloween through Satan's kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> People are so concerned in ruining their uh, celebrated events that are so demonic and don't even realize it. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9, let's speak it. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sin. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or power, powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. For to please the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And you want who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked words, yet now he has reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. If indeed you what? If indeed you what? Continue. 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 That means to be steadfast and consistent. In the faith. Faith means to be what? Connected to his presence. Grounded and steadfast. And not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which is the message of truth, which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven of which I, Paul, became a minister. Wow. The mystery of existence in Christ Jesus. 
And when Christ is in you, the purpose of your existence, the mystery of our existence, is unfolded as a new creation in Christ. <laughs> Confirming our identity as eternal and not temporary. Every day, reaffirming. Every day, being reconnected every day. Remember, that battle is constant. Even when you sleep, you're getting attacked. The attack doesn't stop. The enemy tries to bring those false desires and false pleasures, those temporary fulfillments that mean stinking nothing. <laughs> it's those eternal things that mean everything. Amen? Amen. Oh, yes, Ephesians 4. Jesus died on the cross, went to hell, took the keys of the devil, rose again, ascended. But the first thing he had to do was tear. He tore the veil, the dimensional veil, <laughs> and released the fragrance of his truth and presence and power in Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 7. 4, 7, let's speak it. But to each one of us, grace was what? Given. given. That means there was a plan given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he left captive, captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended. What does it mean? But that he also had to have what? First descend into the lower parts of the earth called Hades. He who descended is also the one who ascended far above the heavens that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for what? Equipping, which means training. For training of the saints for the work of ministry. For the edification or edifying of the body of Christ till we all come to the unity of the faith, meaning we're all connected. And of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of the anointing. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of man and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But what? Speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect of working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying itself in love. We are to be equipped steadfast and movable in the message of the cross, in the victory over evil, and the resurrection of life, releasing, which is the releasing of the Holy Spirit to each and every one of us. Again, we should be equipped, steadfast, immovable in the message of the cross, in the victory over evil, in walking in the resurrection power of life through the Holy Spirit. Colossians 3. I've shared the story before, but I, I just want to share this quickly again. In the area, it's where one day I was driving down the road and the sunroof was open on the car and I, and I looked up and I thought, oh my God, I'm on a planet because I saw the sun and I saw, you know, you could see things in the skies and, and I realized I'm on a planet. I'm, I exist on a planet. And this planet exists in a universe. And this universe exists in eternity. But the universe is just a temporary place. Because one day eternity is going to swallow it up. And I thought, wow. Snap. It's wild. 
But we need to have those connections of revelation in the air of, of who we are in, in a constant arena. Always re being reminded. You know, Holy Spirit's always reminding us. He's always encouraging us. Always. If we're just hearing. But many times, so many distractions come, we don't hear. So many things are caught up with so many things that are going on. We're so busy in recovery of things of the world that we lose sight of reality of who we really are in the existence of God and we are in him and everything that surrounds us and that one day it's all gone and hallelujah. <laughs> Colossians 3 and verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, set your thoughts on things above, not on the things of the earth. That's where the problem is. People are so caught up in traditions of men, doctrines of men, traditions of family things brought down the line. Set your mind on the things above and not on the things of the earth, for you died. <laughs> for you're dead. You died. We died. Everyone say, I'm dead. dead. To myself. <laughs> for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. That's where you and I exist. That's where we exist. But there's another part of us that exists in a temporary place. But our true existence is in God, in an eternal place. We are connected there. With, when Christ, who is our life, appears. Now, this is powerful. Look at this. Okay, go back to verse 3. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears then you also will appear with him in glory. It's like all of a sudden, everything, we will be removed from everything and be fully in him. No matter where we are, when he appears, we will be removed from wherever we are and be brought into him in the true existence. Therefore, do what? Verse 5. Put to death your, mem your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry. And because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, the new existence, who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Christ is all and in all. Again, and we continue with the battle of distractions, the battle of false realities, the battle of deception, the battle of false influences. But only in Christ is our connection to his presence, alignment with his word, can we overcome. Only. That's why we must have the constant area to where we're always being connected, maintaining connection. We're always looking to him. Where we're always keeping the Lord before us. I can't emphasize this enough. Because so many people drift and turn their back on him. Let me tell you, it only takes a moment, one moment to drift. And next thing, we're off course. Amen? And I want to close it. First John chapter 4. Is everybody there? Let's speak this together. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, 
but test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world, and by this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore they speak as of the world. And the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him, no longer through ourselves or through anything else. In this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our what? For our sins. He paid the price. Beloved, if God is so loved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he's given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. And we know and believe the, the love that God has for us. God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Love. This is the love from above, not from beneath. This is a different type of love. This is an eternal love, which keeps us in an eternal position. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The mystery <clears throat> of existence, it's always before us. Always. Every time you look in a mirror, every time we do something, it is a mystery. That mystery can only be understood in Christ Jesus. Only. Nowhere else. People try to search it. They're going to search it until, they, their, until their existence ends. <laughs> but our existence is forever. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed that's been imparted in the reality of our existence in you, because in you is life. They will grow and bear fruit for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Prepare your hearts for communion. You may bring offerings and tithes.